Chapter 2, Part 5, Mechanical Equilibrium. Things that are in balance with one another is an example of equilibrium. So things in mechanical equilibrium are stable without changing motion. For example, the rocks you can see in the picture are in mechanical equilibrium. There is no change in motion. So mechanical equilibrium means there is no change in motion and the reason for that is because, because of the balance of external forces. So external forces, they cancel out, which means the net force is zero. Now, if the net force is not zero, which means the forces are, do not balance, this means the motion, there will be change in motion. Motion is not the same, doesn't keep the same, but it will change. So to summarize, mechanical equilibrium is a state where no change in motion happens. The reason for that is that the net force on the object is zero. That's the reason for mechanical equilibrium. Mathematically, we write it like the, we're using this symbol. The sum of the forces is equal to zero. Let's take an example. You have two men here standing on a scaffold. Now, the scaffold is not moving. It is at rest. So if you, th if you think about upward and downward direction, there is no motion. The whole system, that's the two men and the scaffold, they are not moving upward or downward. So th this is an example of equilibrium. The reason for this is that all forces will cancel out. Now, how many forces we have in the picture? Well, let's, let's consider first the downward direction. We have three forces downward, which are the weights of the three objects we have. We have two men and a scaffold. So we have three forces downward due to gravity or the weight of the men and the scaffold. What about the upward direction? Well, we have two forces and those are the tensions in the two ropes holding the scaffold. Now, because this system is in equilibrium, so the sum of all forces should be zero. That's the net force is zero. Look at this picture. Let's start with the left one. Now, if the girl hangs with her weight evenly divided between the two rings, as in the left picture, what do you think the reading, the scale reading in both supporting ropes compare with her weight? Well, because she's hanging with her weight evenly divided between the two rings, so you would expect that each rope will read half her weight. Now, for the second picture, let's suppose she hangs with a slightly more of her weight supported by the left ring. What would be the reading of the right rope? Now, in the second case, when more of her weight is supported by the left rank, this means the reading of the right will reduce, will be little less than half her weight. Of course, still the sum of the two readings should equal her weight. Consider this example. What is the net force on a bathroom scale when a 500 Newton person stands on? 500 Newton person, that's the weight of the man is 500 Newton. Now the question is, what is the net force on the bathroom scale? Well, obviously the answer is zero. Why? Because the scale is at rest, so it is in equilibrium. The question is asking about the net force, so the net force must be zero. Now remember, the reading of the scale is not the net force. The scale simply reads the support force, and that's the weight of the man. 500 Newton. Let's take another question. Suppose you stand on two bathroom scales with your weight evenly distributed between the two scales. What is the reading on each of the scales? And then 
What happens when you stand with more of your weight on one foot than the other? Well, in the first case, the reading of each scale should be half your weight. In the second case, if you lean more on one scale than the other, then more than half your weight will be read on the first scale, but less on the other one. Still, the total support force should add up to your weight. Equilibrium for moving objects. Now, being at rest is just one form of equilibrium. An object moving at constant speed in a straight line path is also in a state of equilibrium. So once in motion, if there is no force or there's the net force is zero, then we have equilibrium and that means the object will keep the same state of motion. It will keep moving with the same speed without changing direction. Of course, if you have uh, an object under the influence of only one force, you will never have equilibrium. Equilibrium will happen when you have more than one force, like two forces or more, and they combine to zero. In that case, you could have equilibrium. Let's take an example for equilibrium for moving objects. Now there's a girl pushing a box. Now the question says, Explain why the box moves at constant speed. So the box is moving, however, it moves at constant speed, and we want to explain why is that. And is this equilibrium? Of course, moving at constant speed in the same direction, that's equilibrium. Yes, that's equilibrium. But why? Why do we have equilibrium in this picture? Well, we need to look at the forces in the picture. So there are two forces. There is 75 Newton applied force to the right, and that's simply the push of the gear. The gear is pushing with a force, 75 Newton, to the right. However, there is a force to the left, and if you read, it says it reads 75 Newton friction force. So that's friction. And the magnitude of friction is also 75. So if you ask what is the net force along the right and left direction, the answer is zero. So that's equilibrium. And that means this box could be moving, it is moving, however, it's gonna move with the same speed along the same direction. Of course, the friction is a contact force between objects that slide or tend to slide against each other. In our example here, the force of friction will cancel out the applied force the push force and the net force will be zero. Take another example. An airplane flies horizontally at constant speed in a straight line direction. So this means the plane is in equilibrium. How do you know? Well, it is moving the same speed, constant speed in same direction. So that's an example of equilibrium. Now, there are two forces acting on this plane. One is the thrust to the right, which pushes the plane forward. The other force is air resistance, or what's called the drag, and it acts in the opposite direction. Now the question is, which force is greater? If you think about it, we have equilibrium in this example. So this means that both forces should have the same magnitude because the plane is in equilibrium. Let's check this multiple choice question. A bowling ball is in equilibrium when it A, at rest, or moves steadily in a straight line path, or both of the above or none of the above. Well, if you have a bowling ball which is in equilibrium, it could be at rest or it could move steadily. Steadily means same speed in a straight line path. So obviously the correct answer is C, both of the above. Take another example. We have a girl hanging. Now the tension in the rope is reading 300 Newton, which should equal to her weight. In this example, we have equilibrium. Of course, the girl is hanging at rest and the net force is zero. 
Now what happened if you have two ropes? What is the reading of each rope? Again, we have equilibrium. All forces should cancel. So this means the tension in each rope is now on half her weight. That's 150 Newton. Still, of course, if you add all forces, they should cancel out and the net force is zero.